wanna make your render stop looking like this and start looking like this oh my god wow then you're in the right place because in this video i'm gonna show you how you can create realistic outdoor lighting in blender and if you wanna know how i created this grass then you can watch that video by clicking the i button and don't skip any part of this video because there are bonus tips that you can miss so with that all being said let's jump into the video so for exterior lighting you shouldn't ever use a flat background or only a sun lamp to light the scene mm. so the first method for exterior lighting is to use hdrs and these are 360 panoramic images that cannot be only used for the background but also to light the scene and you can either download these as hdr or exr format the both of these work great but i don't know what's the difference and the best and free site for hdrs is hdrheaven.com which has now been moved to polyheaven.com which provides free hdrs textures and 3d models and you should definitely use this website so to use an hdri in blender first enable the node wrangler add-on in the preferences because that makes our workflow faster and now you can select the background node and press ctrl t which adds an environment node with the mapping and the texture coordinate node and it's all pink because we haven't loaded any hdri so now let's open up an hdri and now you can see the hdri all around in the background and also you can rotate the hdri by changing the z rotation value in the mapping node and you can see that right off the bat we get really cool looking lighting but there are a few problems that i faced by using hdris but don't worry because i'm here to help you guys out so the first problem is a lot of the times it happens when you like the lighting of an HDRI but it doesn't match with your scene. So what you can do is duplicate these nodes and now let's preview this background node by holding Ctrl Shift and left clicking on that. So now we have to open up a different HDRI which is similar to this HDRI but also matches with the scene. So this is a morning HDRI so we also have to select a morning HDRI. And now let's preview the first background node and let's see where the sun is and it's right over here. And now let's preview the second one and rotate the HDRI so that the sun position matches with the first HDRI but mine is already matching so I'm not gonna do anything and now what we want is this first HDRI to light the scene but the second HDRI to only appear in the background and we can do that easily by adding a mixed shader and mixing these two backgrounds and for the factor add a light path node and connect the is camera ray to the factor and now we can see the second hdri in the background but the first hdri is used to light the scene and why is it happening is because the rays that are coming directly to the camera without hitting any objects is used as the factor to mix these two backgrounds and you can preview the camera rays by holding ctrl shift and left clicking on the light path node and you can see that the background is white which means it has a value of 1 because the background is seen directly to the camera without hitting any other surface and that creates a mask to mix these two backgrounds but if your scene contains any windows or glasses it won't work though it's a cool looking effect let me show you how to fix that and the reason why is it happening is because the rays that are passing through these windows are transmission rays and you can see that if i use the transmission rays as the factor the effect is now only seen in the windows but we want the both camera and the transmission rays for the factor what we can do is add a math node and now connect these two rays and now the effect is working and the second problem is that you can see the ground clipping off but that's not the fault of the hdri and scaling up the ground to a very large number isn't the solution so what happens in the real world 
is when the distance increases the object sphere away and it's called atmospheric perspective. So what you can do is add a cube but I prefer cylinders because they are rounded. Then I'm gonna scale and move that so that it fits in the camera. You can press shift Z while scaling the cylinder but only on the Z axis. Then go to the object shader editor and create a new material and I'm gonna rename that to fog. And now let's go to the rendered view and delete the principal BSDF and then add a principal volume shader and then connect that to the volume of the material output. And now we have fog but it's weird because the density is so high so I'm gonna decrease down the density to something low like 0.01. And also I'm gonna make the color a bit brighter and slightly yellowish. And now we have some fog in the background. But if you wanna add more fog or instead of using volumetrics because it's pretty slow, in the render layers you can turn on the mist layer and after rendering the image go to compositing and make sure that use nodes is enabled. Then add a mix RGB node and change the blend type to add. Then connect the mist to the factor. And now we have more fog but it's too much. So you can add a color ramp. Then I'm gonna preview the color ramp by holding Control shift and left clicking on that. And I'm gonna change the interpolation mode to B-spline because it is smoother. Then I'm gonna move the left slider to the right. And I'm gonna make the white color a bit darker. And now let's preview the image. And in the mix node, I'm gonna make the second color slightly yellowish. And now here's what it looks like after adding the fog. And now it's much better blending with the background. And now here comes the second method, which is using the Nishida Sky texture, which came with the release of Blender 2.9, and it's really amazing. So before using the Nishida Sky texture, I'm gonna hide these trees and some foliage because it's really slowing down my PC. And now let's go to rendered view and in the world shader editor let's add a sky texture and by default the sky texture is set to Nishida. And now let's plug the sky texture into the color and it's so bright. So I'm gonna decrease down the strength to something low like 0.25. And now let's explore these settings. You can control the intensity of the sun separately from this slider. You can change the size of the sun, the bigger the size of the sun, the softer the shadows will be and the smaller the size, the sharper the shadows will be. And also you can disable the sun if you like. But I don't want the sun so I'm gonna enable that. You can rotate the sun by changing the sun rotation value. You can also decrease down the elevation of the sun and now it's evening and also you can increase that to 90 degrees and now the sun is at the top over the head. And the air is the density of air molecules and by increasing that will make the atmosphere polluted and it looks so bad. Just don't do it. And the dust is just the density of the dust. And by increasing the ozone, it'll make the sky bluish. And the altitude is the height from the sea level. But I don't know why in Blender 2.93, the altitude slider didn't work. So I reported that as a bug. And someone replied that there's a difference in the units. In Blender 2.93, it's meters. But before, it was in kilometers. So to see the effect you have to increase the value to a very large number. So when the altitude is set to 1000, it's 1 kilometer above the sea level. But there's also a problem with the Nishida sky texture. And that is unlike HDRs, it doesn't have any clouds or mountains. So you can use a different HDRI for the background, which I showed you previously how to do that. But what you can also do is you can go to royalty free stock websites like pixabay or unsplash.com and then I searched for mountain clouds 
and I like this image so I'm gonna open that and now download this image and now in blender in the preferences enable the import images as planes add-on if you haven't enabled yet then I'm gonna go to solid view and now you can press shift a and add an image as a plane and now open up the image that we have downloaded I mean that I've downloaded and now I'm gonna move this plane up over here and in the viewport shading I'm gonna change the color to texture so that I can see the texture in the viewport and now let's scale the image up and now select the camera then go to the object data properties and enable the limits and now we can see this line which comes from the camera and now let's move this plane on that line and now rotate the plane so that it's facing the camera and now let's go to camera view and it's so small so now let's scale that up and now I'm moving the plane so that it fits in the camera and now let's go to rendered view and in the object shader editor delete the principal BSDF and instead use an emission shader then go to the object data properties and in the ray visibility turn off the shadow so that it doesn't cast any shadows and now let's go to the wild shader editor and change these settings and try to match the lighting with the image plane that we have added and when it's done correctly it can give you pretty good looking results so by the methods and techniques that I've showed you in this video, you can achieve realistic environment lighting in Blender. And if you want this scene, then you can get that on my Gumroad page for only 5 bucks. And that's it for this video. If you find it helpful, give it a thumbs up and don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the bell down below so that I can keep making these type of videos. I'll be back.